You might read Fleshlight here, but this should actually say Arsenal Football Club. Because they always find a way to fuck themselves. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> I can really say about Arsenal at this point. They lose 3-0 today against Manchester City after a three-month hiatus on the league. Right? Arsenal's last football match was March 7, 2020 against West Ham United. And in the span of these three months, I would have imagined, man, maybe Arsenal can get their shit together. Maybe something positive can happen. Because Lord knows, we kind of need it. I mean, Mikel Arteta, you know, contracted COVID-19, uh, all this abominating leaving talk. I mean, it's, it's a little too much. So you want some semblance of normalcy back. And you know what, Arsenal brought that normalcy back in fucking stride. Holy shit, dude. I mean, they were terrible today. And, and you know what? The, the more frustrating part was... In that first half, they weren't complete dog shit, but, oh boy, you, you could see the chain of events just happening in that first half where you thought, okay, we're going to lose horribly today. And, listen, it all starts with the Black Lives Matter shirts and the kneeling. I'm not going to get too into this shit, but I'll just say this, BLM and kneeling is dumb, okay? You can ask me why. And I fucking have the answer in all the goddamn podcast episodes. You could just fucking check that shit out, man. But lo and behold, you have athletes falling for the trend. And then get on with the match where you're thinking, okay, cool. We got a lot of young guys on the pitch today. You know, Bukayo Saka linking up with Pierre Emerick Aubameyang and Eddie Nketiah at the you know, front three. You know, Willock, Guendouzi, and Xhaka in that midfield. And a back four of, surprisingly, Kieran Tierney, uh, Pablo Mari, Shaja Mustafi, and Hector Bellerin, who looks like Nikola Jokic's younger brother, the NBA player. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Hector really went for that uh, kind of Serbian slash Siberian look. And I apologize if I'm mixing those uh, ethnicities up, but y'all kind of look the same. Not really sorry about that shit. Say the same thing about Asians, right? So... Gotcha. <laughs> but listen, man. When you're watching this goddamn match go on in the first few minutes, Arsenal's actually moving the ball along pretty well. Then Granit Xhaka just clashes into Matteo Guendouzi, and he goes down on the fifth minute of the match. Granit Xhaka has to get stretchered off the pitch, and you have to bring on Danny Ceballos in the sixth minute. Now, remember, kids. You have five substitutions for the entirety of the match, 90 minutes, in the Premier League now with all these new rules and, and the hiatus. So, not a big deal, right? Well, then you reach a 20th minute. And again, up to this point, I think Arsenal's playing pretty decent level of football. They're moving the ball around pretty well. Uh, they have various opportunities on the counter, and they could actually, you know agitate that back four in Manchester City a little bit. So, despite that little bit of optimism, it's Arsenal and it comes crashing down in the form of Pablo Mari getting injured in the 20th minute. Yeah. And guess who has to come on? Yeah? David Luiz! David Luiz! Ah! Do you know why I get so upset about David Luiz? Because as much as he has those like one or two brilliant moments, it's added on by 10 or 15 horrendously bad fucking calls. And you saw it. I mean, you saw it all fucking match after he came on, man. You had Bernalino just doing every fucking thing he can to keep the ball out the net. And I mean, Lino made four magnificent saves in that first half. And you're thinking, wow, like things are going, things are going at it. Man, Trump hire Lino for the fucking wall. And then David Luiz just smacks the shit out of that wall and says, 
Fuck you! Every goddamn criminal's coming over! And when I mean criminal, I mean Manchester City scoring on us, motherfucker! It's Raheem Sterling. 45th minute. Two minutes into uh, stoppage slash injury time. Luis can't clear the goddamn ball. And his terrible footwork essentially gives the fucking ball straight to Raheem Sterling, who has acres of space in front of him. All right? A small dude like Raheem Sterling with that much ball control, you don't give him that much space. He operates in his own shit. Bah! And that's the fucking goal. And, and Lino just looking like a dead fish out there. Like, you have to feel for Bern Lino, a man who, by all accounts, is one of the better fucking players on this squad. Yet, because of his laughable fucking left center backs, just all around shittiness, Lino's left out there to dry. Always. And this is the thing. This is the fucking thing. When you get a back-breaking goal like that in the first half, eventually shit just completely falls apart. And when you start the second half, who else but David Luiz? Who else but David Luiz? This piece of shit takes a fucking red card, gives up the penalty, and... is the goddamn gateway for Arsenal just being a complete shitbag in this match. All right. Kevin De Bruyne scores in that 50th minute penalty. And you imagine Arteta just kind of being pressured into doing something, does something. He makes his final three substitutions. Uh, Lacazette on for Anketia, uh, Maitland Niles on for Guendouzi, and Reese Nelson on for Joe Willick, which didn't really amount to anything, in all honesty, because most of this match, I felt, and from what I saw, was dominated by Manchester City. They moved the ball so fucking well. Kyle Walker, in particular, was very frustrating in the fact that this dude was just completely owning the wings at a certain point in this match, and... You know, as good as I think Kieran Tierney is, it's still a young kid and he got burnt a lot. I mean, you can say the same thing about Hector. And you keep wondering to yourself, man, is this team actually ever going to get good? My answer to that, this season, probably no. No. And, you know, when you're down 2 0 in an empty Etihad, and you have no fucking leaders to pull you through, and you're down to 10 men, I mean, there's not a lot of hope. There's not. And so, as the match goes along, you're just hoping that this shit ends. But unfortunately, a, a very scary clash between uh, City player Eric Garcia, if, I, if I'm saying his name incorrectly, I apologize, but Eric Garcia knocked out by goalkeeper Ederson. Very scary stuff. Um, Garcia was down for a long, long, long time, got stretchered off. Hopefully he was conscious, um, when he was off the pitch, but hoping he's okay. Like that, that, that shit's just fucking scary, man. Like it's just a 19 year old kid who just started getting into that first squad and getting his shit together, but getting injured like that, man, I, I, I was, I was terrified for that kid, but Hopefully he's okay, and hopefully he gets better. And, yeah. At that point, I just thought, man, City's definitely going to win. <laughs> they they got all the fucking motivation on their side. And you have to think about this, too. Pep Guardiola lost his mother to COVID-19 during the break. And I said this, you know, that, that might just be a huge motivator uh, for Pep. You know, seeing his, you know, great friend in Mikel Arteta, but also having to fight through this kind of emotional uh, episode and losing his mother. So, yeah, I wasn't really mad at the fact that City won more along the lines. I was upset that Arsenal lost the match, if you guys understand what I mean. Arsenal had every opportunity to grab this match by the helm and do something about it, but they didn't. All throughout, they just didn't. And it was also evident that they just didn't care 
by the time you know the 90th minute rolled around and it was announced that you're gonna have 11 minutes of stoppage time and the first minute of stoppage time uh phil foden scores for manchester city it's aguero shot that bounces off the post um also a huge fact in this uh, lino makes a sliver of a fucking touch with his foot that allowed that ball to bounce off to the post so aguero misses ball bouncing off the post but the ball lands ever so softly onto the feet of Phil Foden and no Arsenal player is aware of where he is except Bernalino and Bernalino is on the ground there's no fucking way he's going to get back up but our entire defense was just completely at a loss to what what the hell was going on and so 3-0 3-0 and Stoppage time was basically nothing for Arsenal. I mean, they had a couple of decent moments. Bukayo Saka, I thought was notable in his attempt to get shit rolling possibly, but it didn't matter. It really didn't matter because it's just Arsenal's way of, I don't know, kicking themselves in the dick. I, I don't really know what else to make of it in, in all honesty, but... You know, when you see a match like this as an Arsenal fan, you can only maintain the facade of optimism for so long. And, you know, when pe- when you tell people bitter truths, like, they don't want to hear it, even if it's an opposing fan. I got a lot of optimistic, uh, you know, uh, United fans, uh, Chelsea fans, Everton fans, and whenever I talk about them with Arsenal, it's like, oh, dude, you're super depressing. It's like, dude, what the fuck do you want me to talk about with this goddamn club? Oh, how the past was great? Dude, if you keep living in the past, you're not going to see what the hell's going on in the present. And what I see in the present with Arsenal is just a consistent fucking team of shittiness. Okay? And if I call them a good squad at this point, that'd be a fucking lie. This club right now in Arsenal Football Club is nowhere near top 10 level. Top 10. Okay? I say that very knowing like knowingly that <laughs> compared to every other fucking team in, the, in, in this fucking premier league they ain't that good arsenal isn't that good like even compared to tottenham and i hate saying that i fucking hate tottenham but at the same time tottenham's better than us like have, have we not realized that like the structure of our team at this point is set for worse failures than tottenham so with all of that, what in the fuck do you expect from these assholes? I expect nothing at this point. I don't. Oh, cool. You got an FA Cup match against Sheffield in a couple of weeks. Is it June 28th? You're probably going to lose that in an embarrassing fashion. Because you know why? Sheffield's actually good. They give a shit. You motherfuckers don't. Oh, if you don't care and you hate them so much, why do you do Because I love this stupid team. This, that's sports monogamy, bitch. I, I hate what they're doing. I hate how terrible they are. But they're my team. I pick them. And I'm going to be stuck with them for a long time. Oh. I've always said this. If, if I die, I want Arsenal Football Club to be there. To just put me down on the fucking ground one last time. Mm. Trash. Just trash, trash. You got another match on Saturday against Brighton and Hove Albion. Lord knows how you're going to fucking fail that one. But yeah, Arsenal Football Club. Why? Why did we even restart the season? Why did we just get the stupid ass cup to Liverpool and have them get drunk in the fucking Scouse area and shit? Like, why the fuck did we restart this shit? God damn it. Gets... I'm going to talk more Arsenal on Saturday. Right after that Brighton match, hopefully some result comes from that thing, but I fucking doubt it. I doubt it. So, I don't even want to do the outro, man. I'm fucking tired. Fuck Arsenal.